perhaps it's interesting to thumb through the, this uh, magazine, the Radio Electronica. It's of 1967. It was very popular in the Netherlands. And, uh, well, quite a long time ago, of course, but uh, many modern techniques were already showed in this old magazine. We have here, for instance, we have here uh, an advertisement for uh, Norbit 2 and uh, that was an electronic switch unit. You can see it here and the advertisement tells us that electronic switching is uh, much comfor uh, comfortable compared to classic switching with relays etc etc and, uh, and they told it the, the circuit uh, switched quickly and it was 5 kilohertz on the, the frequency on which this could um, switch anyway I think it's interesting to see an intercom of course a transistor intercom 1967 the transistors were already very common in 1962 I had my first transistor a germanium transistor, the OC13, that I used. Anyway, the next page um, op, op amplifiers, operational amplifier, even with a field effect transistor input. And here um, a course that you could follow. Again, uh, do you work already with operational amplifiers or are you going to use them soon? Uh, ask uh, to the program of DDC, Data Diverse Corporation USA. Function generator. Of course a lot of advertisements. That's of course uh, necessary to uh, make such a magazine interesting for uh, commercial use, to earn something. Electrolytic capacitors, long lifetime tolerance 10%, relay, information about relays. And you can see that in those days, old relay, old uh, these long, these uh, relays were used with, with a long contact, and I meant that was quite old school. Anyway, they existed and they still exist now, of course. Coaxial cables, all kinds of. And here, uh, magnetic shield division. Interesting, uh, this is so-called mu metal. It, uh, it was used to shield, for instance, a an, um, cathode ray tube against magnetic uh, influences, magnetism, magnetism coming from outside that could deform um, the waveform and uh, so you needed shielding. But uh, the prob there was a problem with that shielding when you um, uh, saw that shielding or drilled into it or hammered it, it lost its properties. But this material did not lose, lose its good uh, shielding properties. So you could do all kinds of mechanical um, things with it to make it suitable for your um, oscilloscope or so to use it in a practical situation. Milling, drilling, hammering, etc. Allen Bradney components were used in the satellites.
from those days Explorer 1, Explorer 4, Ranger, Surveyor, Saturn, I think that, is, that, that must be the Saturn rocket and they are um, molded fixed resistors perhaps I have some of them in my stock not much I had, did not have so much uh, many American components more Europe Euro European components oscilloscope quartz crystals we had in the Netherlands the completely analog uh, television broadcast Tersh in Smilde in uh, Lopik that was very famous and of course here you could also receive uh, television signals out of Belgium at the border here Brabant etc Uh, soldering iron for precision use converter uh, many television sets in those days only had uh, one channel that was approximately around 88 megahertz and the second channel were on a higher frequency so that there was a converter to convert that higher television frequency to a lower frequency and this is this is going from VHF and UHF, UHF, ultra high frequency, very high frequency. Of course, arbitrary indications. Silicon transistors in epoxy resin could withstand uh, moisture. Scotch tape, a very famous brand in those days, and also. Uh, cassette uh, tapes in the 1980s all kinds of connectors mini Phi I think all for professional use multi switch also interesting you can find them sometimes on flea markets electronic flea markets Uh, color television was a big issue so um, this advertisement tells um, that uh, make your antenna installation suitable for the reception of color television take no risks use an antenna amplifier of Schrader Electronica and here all the types of antennas that they sold transistor voltmeter on my YouTube channel there is a very basic um, schematic with a one transistor of a transistor voltmeter of course this is a professional unit very popular and famous brand Inelco in those days high frequency oscilloscope 1 megahertz maximum of course that's nowadays not, mag not a high frequency scope the minimum uh, highest frequency for a scope for hobby use is 20 megahertz or 30 megahertz anyway very useful uh, electronic or electromechanical fuses for the 230 volt mains in the Netherlands when the fuse uh, flipped tripped you could push the button and activate it again evening courses for in electronics NER was very famous in the Netherlands it was an engineers uh, bureau as far as I know and here again uh, the fifth symposium of international television and in 1967, the year uh, where the television technici have to learn to think in colors. So color television was introduced in the Netherlands in 1967. Frequency counters 
Road, also a big name in the Netherlands in those days. I sum through because um, this is Basef, a German uh, factory that made magnetic tapes and later magnetic discs for the computers in the 1980s. You see how that process uh, was done. The magnetic layer, very fine oxides of iron, typical oxides by the way, not the oxide that we call rust. So specialized, specialized oxides were bound to a, a tape and then cut it into the tapes that we know as uh, that we use on the tape reels. Iron oxide dispersion was added to the foil. TV trainer don't know exactly what it means. An oscillator used as a plug-in unit. They used the old uh, type, uh, tube sockets. Here an, an article about um, loudspeakers. Uh, what's wrong uh, with uh, testing loudspeakers? And then especially, especially they mean the tests on the frequency range and the spectral uh, division between say uh, 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz on the zero decibel line. But many things were forgotten, especially um, how much sound the loudspeaker reproduced. So it could be that a one, one watt loudspeaker had uh, much more efficiency in terms of, of uh, sound output compared to a 10 watt loudspeaker. And all these um, efficiency differences had to be taken in account when you make a loudspeaker box. That's still the same nowadays. Same problem. Fuel cells in the Siemens laboratory in Erlangen in Germany. Electronic uh, radio and amplifier. Very good. Plasti thin film circuits. That was also a new tech, uh, technique in those days. Now it was encapsulated in uh, resin. I don't know what kind of resin anyway. Fuel cells. How the fuel cell worked. 500 watt battery for fuel cells in an electric boat. Fuel cell of Siemens for edu educational purposes. And here a big article about operational amplifiers where they talk especially about uh, the drift. That was a big problem in the beginning, in the early age of um, operational amplifiers, the drift. How to uh, control that drift, keep it within certain limits. Here the principle, yeah, this principle is still usable. Often you see this in old schematics and also new schematics. Often you see that the collectors here are the metal can of the collectors are uh, enclamped together so that they warm up equally. When this transistor warms up uh, uh, more compared to that, there will, a di will be a difference in the collector current, collector emitter current. All kinds of calculations and methods to compensate the drift. TV measurements with oscilloscopes, of course all old school analog television. Here you see the standard uh, test signal for an old school analog television. So, with the synchronized pulses in the beginning and in the end, and the information, uh, the picture in fact, also here present in that television signal. 
synchronization pulses, etc. etc. Always interesting to study an, an old school analog television uh, signal. When you have a scope and an old TV, do it, it's very interesting. Ferranti, as far as I know, an Italian uh, manufacturer. ZTX transistors, NPN, planar transistors, shortwave radio for amateur bands. It was a thesis of a uh, Dutch radio amateur to get his engineer's degree. And there are also, there's more information about that shortwave radio in uh, other. Uh, issues of this magazine, all kind of test equipment to test antennas, oscilloscope, this one went to 150 megahertz, well that's very good of course, differential amplifier, random sampling time base, etc. 4 channel plug-in unit, Dual trace. Nowadays we have uh, already dual trace in the scope tube itself, but in those days you had often uh, only one line in the scope, so you had to use a, sp a specific uh, unit to get to change such a scope in a two channel oscilloscope. Model railway. Many. Um, Articles about that subject. And here you see how that uh, whole um, switch uning switch unit for that model railway was built, completely with classical transistors. Close-up of the prints. Well, that was of course a hell of a job. Integrated circuits for digital applications, the whole classical TTL transistor to transistor logic of those days. Shift register, register 8 bit, shift register with a serial input and serial or parallel output. Circuits, is circuits that could compare two signals, shift register of Texas Instruments in one chip. Very interesting. Decoding matrix binaire to decimal. Every uh, integrated circuit was individually tested and controlled at Philips Eindhoven. And again, a lot of advertisements. Transor transistorized power supply. Advertisement, etc. etc. 